This next item is expensive and oh. it's, it's slippery. It's a massive piece of fire opal. It's more than my whole hand spread out. Yes, all those. Fingers and everything. Ah, don't oh, do that. Okay, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Rebecca's getting nervous. Hey guys, welcome back to another unboxing. We have a really fun episode for you today because we're gonna cover two gemstones that a lot of people get mixed up, fire agate and fire opal. And we have tons of examples for you and we'll clear the air a little bit about these two gems. All right, first box, my present to you. Ooh, these are big. Yeah. And they're faceted. Mm -hmm. That's so uncommon for opal. Yes, yeah, so I'm glad you said that because it is really the only type of opal that is faceted typically. These are wildly cut. Oh yeah, a few reasons why we've got these gemstones. One, it shows different varieties of fire opal. Two, it shows different localities of fire opal. So all of these yellowish golden ones, which I find really, really beautiful, are from Brazil. Okay, cool. These are all fancy cuts. As you can see, there are a lot of concave and convex yeah, facets. Yeah, these are amazing. It's like wavy and curvy. I can only imagine that it must have had to do with the shape of the rough. Fire opal can range from about a five and a half to six and a half on the most scale of hardness. So it's not super hard. It has a pretty low tenacity. So you do have to be careful when fastening it. So we've got probably what you more typically think of when you think of fire opal, which is this fiery orange type of color. This is a really nice re rectangular piece from Mexico. And then these cat's eye. Those are opal, they're just chatoyant? Yes, Oh. Yes. those are from Tanzania. Okay. I, thought you, I thought they were to trick me. Fire opal, like other types of opal, is a hydrated silica, so SiO2. It's actually classified as a mineraloid because it doesn't have that regularly repeating crystal structure. It's rarely found with play of color, so that rainbow mm -hmm. play of color that you see in opals doesn't really exist in most fire opal. The color is caused by iron oxides, mostly ferric iron, so iron with a three plus charge. So you have yellows, oranges, reds. Those are the typical colors of fire opal. One identifying factor that makes fire opal a little bit easier to identify is you'll notice it has this kind of like haziness to it. It's sort of like there's a little bit of it's like fog milky. in there. It causes it to have kind of a mystery to it. This one's like boomerang shaped, or it looks like yeah, um, I really love this like the one. Star Trek pins or whatever. Yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> I like this guy. It's that guy's like got a pretty a really, leaf or something. It's got an interesting cut on the top, like a little semicircle facet. Oh, it comes oh in. right there. Yeah, what yeah, is that? I see that. It's an odd know. little facet. These are chatoyant, so cat size. We've talked a lot about chatoyancy on the channel before, but essentially you have parallel inclusions in a quantity numerous enough that when the light reflects off of them, they create an eye, so. Inclusions of what? In fire opal, it's usually rutile. Okay, let's talk about this piece. This is a Cantera opal. It's from Mexico. A lot of the opal found in Mexico is formed in this rhyolite host rock. Extraction of the fire opal material from this rock can be pretty difficult. So often what you have are these cabs where they will just polish a window in them so you can see the fire opal, but then they keep the host rocks. Yeah, I, with opal, I would be really afraid to try and get it out. For those of you born in October, this is also one of your birthstones. You usually think of the black opal or the white opal that is more common, but fire opal is another option for you. Yeah, don't rule out fire opal. If you are looking to purchase fire opal, it's good to know what factors contribute to its value. So, of course, body color. The red fire opal is going to carry the most value. Size is always important as it relates to a gemstone. The transparency, we talked about the more transparent fire opal is, the more value valuable it's going to be. Play of color is not typically going to exist in fire opal, but if it does, that's going to really increase the value. Great facts. Let's talk about the formation because I think it's really cool. So okay. fire opals are formed in the depths of ancient volcanoes. What happens is water seeps in under lava in these hollows and seams and the lava and water 
It's basically combined, it's a silica rich solution and under intense heat and pressure, these fire opals are formed. That's really cool. Fire opals have actually been known for a really long time, the 1400s, 1500s, and they were really important in Mayan and Aztec cultures. If they didn't call it fire opal, what did they refer to it as? So they actually referred to it as the stone of the bird of paradise. Ooh. Fire opal is actually found in at least five continents. It's a well-traveled stone. Yes, they're really pretty gemstones. I really love fire opal. Yeah. This next item is expensive and oh. valuable, oh. It's, it's slippery. So be very, very careful. Oh my God. You can see how big it is. <laughs> so we both are gonna like kind of have our hands over this because yeah. it's really oily. It's a very large fire opal. It's from Brazil. It's a massive piece it's of huge. rough. It's more than my whole hand spread out. Yes, all those. Fingers and everything. Ah, don't oh, do okay. that. Okay, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Rebecca's getting nervous. It's a very valuable piece. Like other opal, this is a hydrated silica. It needs to be treated occasionally, in this case with an oil, so that it maintains its moisture and doesn't crack. With my opal, occasionally I'll just like wet my finger with some water and then like I was gonna ask, do you like water it. your opals? Like an indoor plant yeah. or something? No, I do because you want them to maintain moisture. We actually have a fun question for you and maybe yeah, you'll have an opinion. It. There's a lot of debate in the building as to what we should do with this. So some people think it might be fun to have a well-known lapidary or someone in-house cut this fire opal in one very beautiful piece to make a big sculpture. A colossal thing which would for sure fit in the palm of your hand. Probably. Or think of how many of these you could get out of this. I know. I know. So you have a lot of options. One, we keep the rough as is. It's very valuable rough. It's beautiful. Two, you make one large interesting piece. Like some people have talked about you know, creating flames. Maybe you do a mm. bird of paradise type of thing with yeah. flames around it. Let's get Dalen Hargrave on the phone. Or do you break it up into multiple pieces and oh. that way you guys could have some of this, which would be really fun. You know, our whole mission is to share gemstones with That's you true. guys. And so the more the merrier in terms of people who get to enjoy pieces like that. Let us know in the comments what you guys think. There's a lot of debate over here on yeah. our side. Glad that's not my call. No, <laughs> I'm glad yeah. that's not my decision. I'm actually pretty split. I have Yeah, I really I don't, don't know. know. I have, None of it's a bad idea. No. I'm kinda antsy to see what you have to show me. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. I have <laughs> stuff for you to see. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh not as heavy as the pouch okay. one fly. Ooh. Oh, look at that. I love Isn't that these. Awesome? Right out of the gate, you notice that iridescence, that color, the rainbow that sort of dances across the surface. That is why people confuse fire agate for opal. I think this stuff is really beautiful. It's got a nice dark brown body color and then lots of greens and yellows and a little bit of red. You can see why they call it fire agate for sure. This caught my eye because of the botryoidal structure. I'm glad you brought that up. If you'll take a look at this rough piece, you oh, can yeah. see the natural botryoidal formation of it. A lot of the fire of fire agate has to be exposed. You need to sort of get into these botryoidal, these grape-like clusters. It needs to be carved away and polished a little bit. When you're cutting, and polishing fire agate to maximize that iridescence, you need to sort of play ball with the botryoidal shape. Otherwise, you risk just wiping the iridescence out completely. This is chalcedony quartz. Agate is a variety of chalcedony, which is a microcrystalline quartz. So it's quartz. SiO2. But it's, yes, SiO2, exactly. But the crystals are microscopic. The iridescence comes from thin, thin layers of iron oxide, like gertite and limonite. I'm sure you've noticed that this and that are not fire agate. Not so much. But if you'll pop that guy out, the metallic sort of luster on top is the gertite, iron oxide, and underneath on this backside is smoky quartz. It's the same minerals as in fire agate, but in a completely different formation. They're separate. I love that. So it's the same ingredients, but a completely different dish, if you will. And like with the fire opal, SiO2 mm -hmm. has iron in it. So like there are a lot of similarities just compositionally, mm -hmm. but this shows how you can get completely different yeah. material. And then this is limonite right here, the other potential 
component in those thin interfering layers. So what happens is as light goes through into the fire agate, this thin iron oxide layer interferes with the light and splits it and scatters it. You get to see the individual wavelengths of light, the colors. These are such unique pieces visually, and they yeah. have to have some interesting backstory. You mentioned volcanoes in the opal backstory. That's kind of exactly the conditions under which fire agate formed, except fire agate only is found in like the American Southwest and Northern Mexico. Okay, so it's like a very not limited five locale. continents. No, not five continents. Fire agate is basically just kind of found in one corner of the globe. These look completely different. So talk right. to us about that. Well, so this is carnelian, which is a variety of agate, which is chalcedony. But I brought it because it's commonly confused with fire agate, especially when fire agate is in its rough form before that iridescence has been revealed. So one thing that I want people to know about these, and hopefully we can capture this in the close-up. Every single color of the rainbow is represented in these, these bubbly sections. And within each of those, it's like a full circle rainbow. These are so cool. It's really, really pretty. It is so unique. I just keep coming back to this one. For the sure. fire is amazing. The shape is really cool. The botryoidal masses, I think are just really interesting. I don't know, it looks almost like a gourd or something. I, it's like Halloween a bone-in ribeye. Yeah, <laughs> there's a whole world inside of these. There is like a teal and like a lime green in there, but that one is really cool. This stuff can be pretty challenging to carve and polish because if you leave too much of the chalcedony layer, it's gonna look dull and your rainbow's not gonna like pop out. But if you remove too much, you might just wipe the layer entirely. You also have to follow the natural structure of the stone, which means that no one of these stones is like the one next to it, which I think is really awesome. These are all different and they're actually all for sale. So if you're interested or you are as into them as Rebecca is, get to them before she does. <laughs> yeah, no, because, seriously. Uh, actually, a lot of the material on the table is for sale, but you can't get this one. Guy. Not yet, at least. Right. Not Depen until yeah, we decide, maybe. Depends on maybe. what they decide to do um, with. So we'll put all the links in the description. Definitely go check those out because, as you can see, these are so unique. There is a whole world inside each of these. I'm telling yeah. you, you could spend a lot of time just looping your fire agate no, and dude, the, enjoying everything in there. But hold on, I've actually got one more box for you. I love it. Kind of wanted to bring some fire of my own. You're, you are pulling away as if there <laughs> really just... is fire in here. Ooh, look at that. We got a little bit of rough fire opal, but give these guys a couple of turns because you might find something kind of neat in there. I see, right there. So it's, Fire Opal with Play of Color. And it's still in its little rhyolite uh, matrix. Sure. You don't know how much opal material is in there. I mean, it's a very small patch, but the Play of it Color is- It doesn't matter, is, it's cool. It's very it's cool. It's really cool. These are mines, actually. Yours personally? Yeah. Wait, these are you been, telling the truth? Yes, these are mine. These <laughs> these are mine and that's Preston's. Wow, well, I'm know, right? jealous. Those are cool pieces to have in your personal collection. Well, okay, Rob, we have seen yeah. a lot of materials. Let's mm -hmm. recap. They have similar makeup. They're formed similarly, mm -hmm. but are actually quite different. Some of the ways to tell them apart, the transparency, yeah. you have Fire opal, more transparent. That haze. Typically, a you've got the haze. Kitchens. The fire agate is going to be more translucent to opaque. You've got the botryoidal structure. Yeah. Okay, so as you know, we always take a closer look. You have to pick a favorite. Well, I. Oh, man. Can I cheat? Can I do two of them? Yeah, we've done that before on this channel. Okay, all right. This one, because of its unique shape, I just want to see what y'all come up with in the comments. You know, if you buy it, you tell us what it looks yeah. like, you know? <laughs> you get to tell other people, this is what it is. This is the T-bone fire agate, or this is the wormy apple fire agate. And then this guy, because it's got that full Roy G. Biv representation. It's got the rainbow of blue and green and yellow and red. And I couldn't decide between the two. Okay, well, if you're doing two, I'm gonna do two. That's only fair. So I love this piece. I just love the shape. I think it's really interesting. I love these like neutral golden yellows. I think they're really pretty. And this is just a totally one of a kind piece. And so take a closer look yeah, at all of them. Take a closer look.
Thanks so much for watching, guys. Hopefully you can tell the difference between Fire Agate and Fire Opal, and tell the, the similarities between the two as well. Let us know what your favorite was down below in the comments section. As a reminder, a lot of these are for sale, so we'll put the links in the description, so check those out. Let us know if you get any, or have any further questions about any of them, because yeah. we'd love to answer. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Bye.